Sec 4 NA Revision Checklist Part 1B Question 12A Given that 2 to the power 34 divided by 2 to the power 16 equals to 2 to the power k Now what we need to do down here is to change them to the same base Okay, so I have 2 to the power uh, 34 That is already base 2 to the power 34, no problem But then 16 can be changed to 16 divided by 2 a. And that means 16 can be 2 to the power of 4. Now, when we have division, what happens to the power? Now, they will subtract each other. So, therefore, what is the power of k? This is 2 to the power of 30, 2 to the power of k. And if I compare, k will be now 30. Part B, a to the power of 4 times a divided by a to the power of uh, a, what is square root of a? When you take square root, we divide the power by 2. So if I originally have a to the power 1, and I'm going to take a square root, that means it will be a to the power 1 over 2. So now I'm going to change all this to base a, a to the power 1, divided by a to the power half, to be equal to a to the power k. So that means this will be a to the power of a multiplication, what happens to the power? 4 plus 1 is 5. Minus away half, 8 about k. So this is 8 about 4 and a half. And therefore, k equals to 4 and a half. Have you gotten the answer? Part C. Okay, now question here says, I have the number 1 to 5 to the power of b equals to 1 over 5. So now let's do a few adjustments. I'm going to change everything to the base 5. So 1 to 5 divided by 5 gives me 2 to 5. So 1 to 5 is actually 5 to the power of 3. Remember, there's still a b at the side. So 5 to the power of 3, b. And this is equals to what? 1 over 5. 1 over 5 is actually 5 to the power of negative 1. That means in this case, the base and the base are the same. The power 3b will now be equals to negative 1. How do I get b? Negative 1 over 3. Next one, part d. Uh, 3 to the power of k equals to 3 to the power of uh, square root. Of 3 so I have 3 to the power of k divide now what did we say square root is square root will divide the power by 2 so it will be 3 to the power 1 divided by 2 and what will give you what power will give you 1 well 3 to the power of 0 so now I have when I have division the powers subtract each other so now I have 3 to the power of k minus half to be equals to 3 to the power of 0. So k minus half is equal to 0. Comparing only the power, k will be half. Have you gotten the answer? Part C. Solve the following equation. I have a couple of different base here. Now what is the smallest base that I'm going to change everything into? The smallest base for 4 will be 2 squared. 4 is actually 2, 2. So it will be 2 to the power of 2. But recall that outside still have the x minus 3. So it's 2 times of x minus 3. Times 8 is 2 to the power of 3. But outside we still have a bracket. 3x minus 1. To be equals to 32. Uh, 32 divided by 260. So 32 is 2 to the power of 5. Now when we take square root, what happens? The power divided by 2. Now when we have multiplication over here, the power add together. So this is 2 to the power of 2x minus 6 plus 3 times 3, 9x minus 3 to be equal to 2 to the power of 5 over 2. 
Therefore, we only take the power to be equal to each other. 2x plus 9x, that gives you 11x. Minus 6 minus 3, negative 9, to be equals to 5 over 2. And what is 11x? 11x will be 5 over 2 plus 9. When you bring over, you need to change sign. So this will be 11 and a half. And x will be divided by 11 to give us 23 over 22. Answer. Have you gotten the answer? Question number 13. Now, simplify the following in positive indices. Let us do this one at a time. So, firstly, I have square. This square will apply to who? You apply to both 3 and a. So, 3 square is the number 9. a square over 4c to the power 5. And before we do a division or whichever, I notice that this one has a power negative 4. So, if this is the case, this power negative 4 is for who? Only for a, right? So, now this power a will shift down to the denominator. But here we have a to the power 1 already. If it comes down to a denominator, how many will there be? How many a will there be now? There will be what? Uh, 5 of them, right? So, be 12. A to the power of 5 C cubed. Now, what can we do? We're going to change the division to multiplication. Change to multiply and the whole fraction flips. So, we 12 A to the power of 5 C cubed over 15. Let's deal with just the numbers first. 9 times 12 divided by 4 times 50. So 9 times 12 is uh, number 108. I have a square, a to the power of 5. I'll get a to the power of 7. When you multiply, right, the power n. So this is c to the power of 3. Next one, 4 times 15 gives me 60. Uh, only c squared. So simplifying this, we get the number to be 108 over 60 is simplified to 9 over 5. A to the power 7, nothing to cancel, so it's the A to the power 7. C to the power 3, C to the power 2. Which one has more? The numerator or denominator? The numerator, right? So I'm left with C. Have you gotten the answer? Now, question 14, I just noticed that it's being repeated, so don't need to do question. Let us move on to financial transactions. Okay, financial transactions. On one certain day, the exchange rate between the English pound and the American dollar was one pound to one eighty. So I'm gonna write this down. One pound to one dollar eighty cent. I can put an equal sign in this case because it is equal. So calculate the number of dollars that can be bought for two hundred pounds. So I want 200, this is part 1. So take 180, multiply by 200 to give me $360. Sorry. Okay, underline the answer. Part 2, calculate the number of pounds that can be bought for $900. So if I want $900, this will be 900 over 180 times 1. So 900 over $1.80 times 1. That gives me 500 pounds. Underline the answer. Now, part 3. Another bank charges 2% of the commission. Okay, of the whole value change. The commission charges for one particular exchange was... This one, 14, 20 pounds. So it means 2% represents total of, uh, not, not dollar, but pounds. 14, 20 pounds. So I want to calculate the amount of money that was exchanged. So the amount of money was 100%. How do you find 100%? 
hundred divided by two times one four zero. So we get the answer to be seven hundred and ten pounds. Have you gotten the answer? Financial transactions are a different question. Mr. Tan and his family had dinner at a restaurant in Singapore. The bill of the dinner came to 243 before a service charge of 10% and a GST of 7% on the total. This total will include the service charge. So we need to calculate the GST only after you have calculated the service charge. Calculate the amount that Mr. Tan had to pay for the service charge. So for service charge, service charge is 10%. 10% of the value of money is 243. That gives me a total of $24.30. Part 2. A GST of 7% is charged on the total amount after the service charge. Express the cost of the GST as a percentage of the whole dinner, of the dinner itself. Okay, so in this case, so the GST uh, is charged as after this. So in this case, let us count the total first. The total amount is made up of 243 plus $24.30, which gives me uh, $24.30 plus $243, Now they want a 7% GST, so 7% out of 267.30. That will give me eighteen dollars seven one one point seven one one. Although this is not uh, accurate, but in this case, because it's not the final answer, I'm going to use the more accurate answer. Now they want us to express this as a percentage. So this is the amount one eight point seven one one of the dinner. The dinner is two four three times 100% and that will give me 7.7% Have you gotten the answer? Up next Question C A television set is purchased at $920 if the customer pays by cash he decided to buy the television set by higher purchase. She paid a down payment of $200 and 18 monthly installments of $50. What does this mean? Okay, let's take a look at the situation. So, uh, the amount that Mrs. Lee paid for the television set on higher purchase. So, Mrs. Lee paid... A total of $200 plus 18 months of $50. Well, this is easy, right? That's 18 times 50. That gives me $1,100. But now they want me to calculate the yearly compound interest rate charge under the installment scheme. Now, this one we have to take a look at the how the installment actually works. Now, original price is $920. But I paid a down payment. So originally is 920. Okay, erase this. Alright. I paid a down payment of how much? $200, right? So how much did I owe? What is the amount that I owe? Well, I do a subtraction. I owe 720. That means I need to pay interest on this amount which means this will be my principal amount to be 720 and then uh, 
What is the total amount after my interest rate? They tell me I have 18 months. It amounts to a total for this amount that is owed is 18 months after interest. It will be 18 months times $50. That will give me 18 times 50 to be $900. That means my total amount is $900. They asked me for a yearly compound interest rate. The time I have is 18 months. But 18 months is how many years? So I need to take 18 divided by 12 to give me 1.5 of a year. Now compound interest rate states that Total amount equals to P bracket 1 plus R over 100 to the power of N. So now the total amount is $900 equals to the principal amount is 720 times 1 plus R. Interest rate, I don't know. I need to find. But this is 1.5 times. What do we need to do? Firstly, we need to get rid of 720. So this is multiplied, right? So I'm going to do a division. So 900 divided by 720 gives you 1.25. So divide by 720 first. And 1.25 is equal to 1 plus... R over 100 to the power of 1.5. How can I get rid of my 1.5 now? That means I'm going to root 1.5, right? So that means root of 1.5, 1.5 root. Do you know how to press this inside a calculator? Of the number 1.25 will give you 1 plus r over 100. Now I don't have space, so I'm going to shift this over here. Now after I calculate 1.5 root 1.25, it gives me the number from here. From here I have 1.16012344. Okay, the 5, 6 feet to be 1 plus r over 100. So getting rid of 1, subtracting 1 on both sides. So I get 0 0.1604 is r over 100. Then now I don't want over 100 I times 100 to get r. That will be 16.04. Therefore, interest rate is 16.04%. Have you gotten the answer? Now, let's go back to our question. Part D. In a sale, all the items are given a percent, 30% discount. Mary paid 1557 50 cents for M prepare. She paid this. So when she paid for this, this was before discount, after discount. After discount, right? So original is 100%. After discount, this one will be 70%. So that means 70% represents $157.50. Calculate the original price. That means I find the 100%. How will you find this answer? 100 divided by 70 times 157.50 and that gives you 225 for the mp3 plate have you gotten the answer? 
Now we come to end of this part of the checklist. Next lesson, we'll be doing uh, TYS. Please bring your TYS paper on Friday. Uh, 2016, paper 1. We can't finish all the questions, but we'll try to do as much as possible. 2016, paper 1. Bring TYS. 2016, paper 1. And try to do as much as you can. Alright, see you for the next lesson.